Okay, welcome, and we really appreciate that we have the, have the opportunity to present the ABAP platform strategy here at the ABAP conference. As explained already, Bosgepa, chief product owner of the ABAP platform, and Frank Gensch is our project lead for Steampunk, the ABAP environment in SAP this technology platform. So um, the session today will focus on innovations in the ABAP platform and how this impacts you as ABAP developers. So it will be really a call for action to learn something new about ABAP. And I think this ABAP conference is the best possible start to directly go on with learning after that. Good, concerning the agenda. First, a very slight, um, one slide about the impact of our platform. In the title we have seen, okay, our platform runs the world. I somehow have to motivate that. Then um, we go over to innovations. So the other platform is out there for decades. Do we really need uh, still innovations in the other platform? And we will concentrate here on the big transformation we are in from the business suite to S4 HANA and to the cloud and how the other platform um, is part of the transformation and what you as other developers have to learn to be part of that transformation as well. And then we will focus on extensibility. I think you all extend the EAP of SAP and that's the main task, what you're doing with custom ABAP code. And there are some changes ahead and therefore we want to focus on that topic, especially so that you know what kind of topics will be of interest, what kind of topics you should invest concerning uh, learning. Good, first impact. You all know the ABAP platform. That's a, a robust, scalable platform to run and to build effectively ABAP solutions and business solutions. It's really tailor-made for business solutions. It's the foundation of the big SAP solutions, the big ERP solutions, Business Suite, um, NetWeaver, S4HANA, and all that led, led during the last decades to more than 100,000 installed productive SAP systems, all running on ABAP. But not only um, SAP is using ABAP to develop business applications, each and every customer and partner is doing that on top of the SAP solution. So extending the SAP solution. So on average, in a typical SAP system, we see more than 20,000 custom ABAP code objects, just to give you a feeling about the impact concerning what is going on in a customer system and about all the ABAP developers who extend SAP solutions. And if you check the registered ABAP developers, then we see about 5 million of those. So there, there is quite some impact and it's really fair to say that the ABAP platform is massively adopted. So what about innovations? And I explained already, you may ask yourself, okay, our platform is out there for decades already. Why do we need innovations? It's not mature um, after all these decades. And the main reason is that the sweet spot or the main reason why the ABAP platform exists. So that is, of course, um, to be the platform of the big SAP solutions. And these solutions, these ERP solutions are in the middle of a big transformation. So we are coming from the left side, the business suite, SAP business suite. There's this classical Dynpro GUI-based transactions on premise. And now we transform to the right side, which is S4 HANA, we have these VOE apps, mobile apps, browser-based apps in the cloud. And this big transformation, of course, directly influenced the other platform as well. Since we are, since we more or less were part of the business suite, this subnet here is ABAP, and we were provided on the left side a very powerful development model to build these Dynpro-based um, applications with thousands of developers, with all the developer efficiency, with the support, and maintenance tools and all that stuff. Now we have to do the same on the right side to build effectively these fury based apps, cloud enabled, um, mobile and so on. And again, it must be as effective as we know this from the Dynpo world. It must still scale with thousands of developers. You must still be able to support it effectively with a debugger. You must provide test tools and all that stuff. And additionally, we must transform our, our platform so that it can run effectively in the cloud. That's why we have this innovation pressure because of that big transformation. I think you as an ABAP developer are mostly affected by the change of the programming model. So from the left, classic ABAP programming with thin pros, with freestyle ABAP, perhaps web thin pro, to the right, which is the ABAP RESTful application programming model wrap, 
with core data services, behavior definition, simple business objects, sub UI5. That's the big change which is happening at the moment. And if you perhaps visualize that, then if you are still more on the left side using SEAT, screen painter, menu painter, and you build this freestyle code, this mixed PBO, PIA, and other code, then it's now time to invest into learning so that you are part of the transformation which is happening to the white side. So that's the standard model um, which we use internally at SAP to build as four applications. And it's the standard model how you extend the solutions as well. And that is you use the you use WAP to build your business objects, the behavior. You use core data services down there to model the data model of your application to access and query HANA effectively. You use, of course, ABAP development tools and Eclipse for all your development work. And you use sophisticated check and test and quality tools like ABAP test cockpit, ABAP units. You see here the coverage analyzer um, to ensure that you build robust and high quality software. So not only syntax checking, but using all these different tools to ensure that you um, create a high level of quality in your um, so software development. So it's really a call for action. I think there are several sessions here at ABAP conference that you concentrate on that transformation to uh, being part of that transformation to this new programming world. That's a big change. I know that a lot to learn, perhaps on all ang angles you have to learn, the IDE, programming model, tools, and so on. But um, there's no way around that. Um, that's the future and that's where, what we are heading for. And by the way, um, you may ask yourself, how shall I get in contact with all that? Because my system is quite old. All this stuff is not available in my system. You will see Steampunk in a sect. So our ABAP environment in BTP, and we have a trial version out there. So directly after the session, you can check in the trial version, the newest version of the ABAP platform, and get in contact with all these technologies. Good. After seeing that, let's step over to extensibility. And extensibility is key for an ERP. I, I think I don't have to convince you about that. We have learned that during the last decades. I have explained that we have 20,000 custom hour code objects on each and every system. So obviously, extensibility is key for an ERP on premise. This will not change magically in the cloud. Of course, cloud is about standardization, but still extensibility is key. Just think about all the different country versions, industry flavors, customers want to optimize or innovate their processes. Um, these requirements will not vanish in the cloud. So for that, we need extensibility, which extensibility for a cloud ERP as well. And therefore in that chapter, um, I would like to show you how on premise, in S1 on premise, currently the extensibility looks like, how it looks like in the public cloud, in S4 on a public cloud, and what are the gaps, what must be improved, and this will lead us to a vision concerning how extensibility shall look um, in the future for all the different S4 on editions which are available. So let's start with on premise. I think it's fair to say that the, the mainstream concerning extensibility in on premise is freestyle custom hour coding. That means you build custom hour code directly on the S4 on premise. And since SAP delivers the SAP code, you can look at the code of SAP, you can copy the code, you can select data as in the screenshot shot here directly from SAP tables, you can change the content of SAP tables. And if that is not even enough, then you can even modify the SAP code using the modification assistant, as you see here on the screenshot. So there are no technical limitations at all concerning extensibility. Perhaps that was one of the success factors of our SAP on-premise ERP because of this incredible, flexible, and rich um, extensibility. The drawback of that incredible flexibility is that there is no real interface between the extensions and SAP code. So everything is more or less one big thing. Um, that is that, that the, the disadvantage of that approach comes up when you have SAP upgrades, because if the SAP code changes, and since there is no clear interface, each and every SAP change may directly affect your extension. Therefore, you have to test everything, perhaps you have to do corrections because there was a change in the SAP code and so on and so on. And that um, is one of the reasons why SAP upgrades can get really um, nasty, including a lot of effort and so on and so on. And it's, I think it's absolutely clear this kind of freestyle custom ABAP code 
can't be used in the cloud, in the public cloud, because here SAP is responsible for the service. SAP updates the software in S4 HANA public cloud regularly, quarterly. And this happens at a weekend, so all the instances are upgraded to the newest version um, automatically. And there's no time and no um, means to do customer specific upgrade well checks. This must happen automatically, and the extensions must work afterwards as before. And that can only be achieved if there's a clear interface between the extensions and the SAP code. Otherwise, you can't achieve this cloud update behavior. So, and that means in the cloud, new rules are in place for extensions. First of all, you are no longer allowed to change SAP code, to modify the SAP code. Second is you can only use SAP objects which has been released. So only the released public APIs and objects can be used in extensions. So these are the new rules which apply in the cloud, uh, which allow these automated software updates. If you now check in s public cloud, which kind of extensibility options are available for you, for other developers, um, then we have two, two sections, let's say. We have in-app extensibility for tightly coupled extensions. So these are extensions which shall run directly in or on the s cloud stack. So perhaps you want to add a field to a Fury app of SAP. Perhaps you want to add a, a tiny condition in the code. Um, of SAP in a predefined extension point to manipulate the process, perhaps don't want to replicate a lot of SAP data to a side-by-side -side platform, and that's why it's a tightly coupled extension with shell one on the stack. Key use at the moment, key user extensibility, so low no code tools for business experts. On the other side, we have side-by-side -side extensibilities. These are these loosely coupled solutions running on our SAP business technology platform. So think about big partner solutions. Think about a partner solutions, which partner solution, which is a software as a service offering. The partner wants to operate that um, separated from the ERP. Shall run in a dedicated data center. Shall run with other SLAs. Perhaps innovation speed is different to the ERP. So all these are reasons why you want to loosely couple that, and it shall not run directly on the ERP. We provide here in on the right side. Um, course, different environments, ABAP, Java, and Node to build your solution. Now let's dig a little bit deeper in the different options. First, key user extensibility in low no-code tools, just to ensure that you know what we're talking about for these tools. So these are this is not an IDE which we use here. These are Fury tools which allow business users to extend the s 400 cloud applications and processes. So you use, for example, a tool to adapt the UI of a Fiori apps, um, sh shifting around fields, or you add a custom field um, in a Fiori app from the database through the ABAP layer to the UI, or you add some lines of code in a predefined extension point, so some custom business logic. But all this is tailor-made for business experts for, with low no-code tools. You don't have a debugger, you can't refactor something, so it's not usable for big development projects. If you have a development project, then you have to do this side by side. Then you do this on the business technology platform. And um, for the business technology platform, as indicated, we have three different environments, ABAP, Java, and Node. And since this is now the ABAP conference, we will focus today on the ABAP environment in the business technology platform. And for that, I hand this over to Frank to give you an overview about that in a second. Frank, will you go on? Yeah, thanks, Boris. So let me share my screen to continue. I think you need to stop your sharing. Thanks. So, hello and good morning. So now I would like to uh, give you a short overview about the, the Steampunk offering on BTP. What are the main characteristics? First of all, 
Steampunk is a platform as a service offering for ABAP. We are providing a technology stack to develop standalone applications or side-by-side -side applications. A HANA database is included as part of this offering. And from a development perspective, we are providing the ABAP um, development tools in Eclipse. We are supporting a subset of the ABAP language, which is optimized for cloud development. And from a programming model perstective, we are providing the ABAP RESTful application programming model. So the UI part is not directly included into Steampunk because we are reusing the Subfury tools for UI development, but a lot of other um, features which are well known from the on-premise world are supported like custom code analysis and also ATC uh, checks and those things. And um, the most important aspect from an operations perspective is that SAP operates the systems. So this is the main difference, of course, to compare to on-premise. So Steampunk is available as a product uh, in the BTP um, since uh, 2018, and it's also available um, on BTP trial. So and I will also share you a live demo later on um, how to use this trial offering. So these are the main characteristics. What are the main usage scenario? When does it make sense? And, and uh, who is using Steampunk? So first of all, it's uh, intended for external customers and the main scenarios are side-by-side uh, -side extensions and standalone applications. There's another usage scenario, of course, for partners. Partners, of course, also um, want to develop standalone applications, but there's an, another flavor which is very important uh, for Steampunk and for partners. So this is the multi-tenancy capability. So it's, of course, very important to provide these features in order to achieve um, 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 a cheaper offering um, for, for the developed SaaS solutions. And last but not least, um, we also want to eat our own dog food. So Steampunk is also used for other products of SAP, so products on top of Steampunk. So for example, um, SAP Master Data Governance Cloud Edition. So I would like to explain a bit more the, the building blocks, the main building blocks. We will also see a few of them in the live demo later on. So I think the, the most important information of this um, um, picture is that we are using the side-by-side -side models. In the middle of this picture, we have the Steampunk uh, system, which contains uh, of the ABAP stack plus the HANA database. The, the most important aspects of the, HANA, of the ABAP stack are the uh, programming model, which is RAP, then the uh, cloud-optimized ABAP language, and the usage of released APIs. On the right-hand side, we have the different uh, options to connect to other systems, mainly the ERP core systems in different flavors. And uh, on the left-hand side, we see uh, the different tool sets for the different roles. So in, as an administrator, um, I am just using the BTP cockpit to um, administer the uh, um, Steampunk system. Uh, the, the SAP Fiori tools are used for your development and for the ABAP development, Eclipse is used. All right, so as, as I already said, we are um, doing the operations of the Steampunk systems, and we are delivering, of course, also um, new versions um, very often, I would say. So we are providing quarterly upgrades. There's also a blog describing uh, when these upgrades are applied. And uh, what we are delivering is explained here in this uh, blog post and in the um, standard BTP section about what, what's new features. And normally we are providing 30 um, to 50 new features per release. So I think it's maybe not really readable what is mentioned here, but uh, maybe on the right-hand side in this blog post, you can see as a top one uh, feature the, the RAP generator. And later on in the live demo, I will explain this a bit more. And this was delivered three weeks ago um, as part of our November upgrade. So before I'm going to the uh, live demo, let me explain a bit the product direction of Steampunk. So what is uh, on, on our agenda to provide and what we uh, plan to provide in the next calendar year. So from a pure scope perspective, um, I think in the, in the RUB area, we uh, need the 
event consumption and provisioning, and also to close a few gaps in the developer extensibility area. And from a reuse perspective, um, we will provide the data archiving. Um, and as you can see here in this slide, um, our main focus is in the next calendar year on, on uh, infrastructure aspects. Um, so first of all, uh, in addition to this shared trial offering, um, we will also provide um, the free tier model for Steampunk. And the good news is that um, hopefully we can provide this uh, not only in the next calendar year, but uh, also starting this offering in this calendar year. And, and you know, it's not too much days um, uh, in front of us in this year. So, but uh, I think we, uh, we can achieve this to offer the free tier model for Steampunk as well. Um, as one, so to say, side effect um, of, of this free tier model, we will also introduce the option to use a 30 gigabyte um, HANA database instead of uh, 64, which is the current default. So this will, um, of course, have an impact on the on the um, costs because then the cost for the for the HANA part of this offering is just a half of this uh, of the current costs. And this is very, um, of course, very good option uh, if you want to start uh, your development. Um, another very important aspect is. Uh, these are the, the cloud qualities, so we want to uh, improve the uh, elastic scaling because we also um, migrate internally to Kubernetes-based infrastructure. We plan to offer more data centers on AWS and also further hyperscalers like uh, Microsoft Azure. And with regard to further cloud qualities, uh, we plan to support uh, high availability, disaster recovery, and we want to reduce our currently and maintenance windows. And last but not least, I think also very important for, for this audience, uh, we want to introduce a suspend, modus, a suspend mode in order to reduce the pay-per-use costs. So it means if you, if you do not uh, implement at the weekend, you could uh, suspend the system and save money. All right, so as this is only um, a keynote presentation, it's uh, <clears throat> just an overview and we have a, a landing page uh, for Steampunk with all this kind of information and with, a, uh, with, with links to tutorials uh, where you can directly try out all these things. And with that, I would like to uh, show you now a live demo. And for this live demo, I'm using the trial um, uh, offering of BTP, and it means you can immediately uh, start using it after this session. Uh, hopefully not now in parallel, because this uh, um, trial offering is a shared trial. So it means you can also see my, my demo, and please do not change what I would like to show you now. Um, but first of all, um, I'm in the BTP uh, cockpit, and now I'm going to the trial account, to my trial account. So I already registered um, to this trial and now I'm in the so-called global account of my trial account. I already used a booster, uh, which prepares everything uh, with only a few clicks. So I clicked on uh, prepare an account for our trial. So I already did it. So then I can go into my sub account and I have already an, an instance, which simply points to my uh, trial instance, so my, my trial ABAP system. Here I can copy the so-called service key, <clears throat> which describes the endpoint where the system is located, and I can paste this uh, in my ADT local installation um, to get a project for this system. So again, this trial system, and um, uh, it was not shown uh, in, in the demo, but it, this system is located in the US East on uh, AWS, and now I switch into the local installation of my ADT, and um, I'm already connected to this trial system. As I mentioned, I just copied the service key here, and, and now I have uh, this uh, project in my ADT. So I um, prepared a few things. Um, I, I created a package, so ABAPConf demo, and um, I, yeah, started with a few 
objects. And what I would like to show you now is um, what are the main application types which can be used with Steampunk. So there is no SEAD, there's only Eclipse. And uh, it means there is also no uh, sub GUI. And uh, what is now <clears throat> possible if, um, if you want to build a business application? And first of all, I would like to start with a data model. And it's also very important to mention that uh, Steampunk, uh, the, Steam, the, the sweet spot of Steampunk is uh, for, for such applications where you really need um, a data model, where you need to store own data. So Steampunk is maybe not the right choice if you just want to build an application which uh, reads remote data, wrap this data and, and visualize this data in the UI. So for that purpose, it's Steampunk is, is not the right choice, I would say. But if it comes to, um, to the storage of data, to data models and uh, uh, build business applications with a transactional behavior um, on this data model, then uh, Steampunk is the uh, very good choice. So therefore, I would like to start with a very small database table. As you can see here, uh, maybe you know the SE11. Um, so this is the um, ADT native editor for database table. Uh, basically, there is only one important field. Uh, this is uh, an app type name, so an application type name. And um, I have just the UUID as a uh, primary key. And um, I would like to, to show you now the, the first application type, which is supported. So this is so-called console application. So a console application is uh, yeah, comparable with a, with a report in the, in the, in the on-prem world. Um, but it does not support a selection screen. But what you can do, you can implement a main method. And this is just um, executed if you press uh, F9 in that case. And uh, what I would like to do is I would like to add a new record in this database table. So this is um, pretty straightforward. I have the data declaration of this internal table, get a timestamp for, for transactional purposes later on. And I'm just uh, uh, adding the name console application. So only one record in this database table uh, set demo app type. So that's all. I'm deleting all the entries before. I execute this. And in the ABAP console, I, I'm getting the, the message that one entry was inserted. Now I can also check the database table if I uh, using the, the preview. And I can see here in the preview that is one record and uh, my console application. So this was one, um, the first very small, simple application type, which is supported by Steampunk. So it's a console application. As you can see, this is not relevant for business end users, um, but it's important for, for developers um, to develop utilities or small tests and the like. So of course, that's, that's not why you uh, should uh, buy or try out steampunk um, the, the much more important thing is the um, is how to build a business application um, on top of this data model and for this we are providing the other restful application programming model abbreviation is rap and uh, i i'm pretty sure that you already heard about this there's also an open sap course for rap so and what we now um, offering is so it generates um, the required um, repository objects for RAP um, to provide a UI service uh, where a UI can build on top of this UI service later on. So I already use this generator. This is um, yeah, comparable with the uh, few maintenance generator in, in the on-prem world, but it's not, not only for the purpose of uh, yeah, creating UIs for, for business configuration is, is really your starting point to build a uh, real business application, not only business for business configuration, but to, to really build UIs, uh, including transactional behavior and so on and so forth. But with a small, with a, only a few clicks, you can really achieve um, a whole um, um, all data service for UI purposes and where you can also uh, use Fiori elements on top of it. So I don't want to explain all the different object types which are created. I just want to um, navigate into the resulting um, so-called service binding, which represents the OData service. And I can start the preview here. And um, I'm getting now a Fiori elements UI. 
and I can uh, select the data and I see is only one record. So what I, what I did now, um, so I, I presented you how to build a, a, a RAP service and I just enter a new record here. And this gives us now a, a second row in our table. Um, and um, this is yeah the the highway so to say the, the main purpose of um, steampunk because RAP is the uh, recommended programming model for steampunk and not only for steampunk but also for um, um, other flavors of, of other um, deployments and uh, last but not least i would like to show you yet another option which is possible and this is the so-called um, freestyle http service so, and uh, for that purpose, I'm going back um, into ADT. And um, this is very similar to SICF nodes in the on-prem world, but it's now better integrated because now it's really a, a repository object. And this HTTP service uh, can be defined very easily. It's just a name, it's a handler class, and that's it. So now I can um, navigate into the handler class and what I did here is just to read all the entries of this um, uh, database table. I'm doing a um, simple transformation to uh, generate the, the XML for only the list of the app type names. And I'm providing um, this back uh, as the, the response to my HTTP request. So that's all. And um, the good thing is I can simply uh, yeah, test it in, the, in order to um, see what are the results. So therefore, it's just executed now. And I'm getting uh, my two um, application types I showed before. And now I can also, of course, in the Fury UI, add my, my third one, which is a freestyle HTTP service. Um, there are a lot of other features, of course. So, for example, to, to do the, um, yeah, the, the ATC check. And, uh, of course, I would get an, a warning because uh, it's uh, not, not a text element is used in that, in that case. And I can debug all these, all these things, of course. Um, but this is just a very short demo to give you an, an introduction about the different application types and how to use it directly using the trial offering of BTP. And um, yeah, again, you can just directly look into it, uh, create your own objects in the trial offering, and can uh, get a better impression about the newest and greatest other features. So with that, I would like to hand over back to Boris. Thank you very much. Give me a second to share again. So I think we have seen um, what you can do with our, um, sorry for that, I just, firstly, I have to go to the quick slide, my fault. So here we go. So. I think we have seen nicely from Frank um, that you can now use our Steampunk, our other environment in SAP Business Technology Platform to build applications side by side in the cloud. And I'm not sure if you have seen it, but it's not the freestyle custom upper code which you would use or which you have used on premise, but um, you are restricted to public APIs, you can't modify SAP code. So all these cloud rules, which I explained are in place. So that's nice. So if you now summarize what we have in the cloud, we have user extensibility, these low no code tools, and we have um, SAP business technology platform for side by side solutions. And we have seen how this works in ABA. And all those um, obey to the rules, which I explained, uh, which are valid in the cloud, no modifications and public APIs. So that's good. But what is bad or what is a challenge? The challenge is, of course, if you have an extensibility project and extension points or APIs are missing. So SAP hasn't provided that, haven't provided those APIs yet. Um, therefore, SAP massively invests to increase the APIs because, of course, if an API is missing, this may block your extensibility project. 
So that's one of the key priorities at SAP to provide more and more um, of these remote APIs and local APIs, and extension points, and there's a request process for customers so that they can apply for new APIs so that they can go on with the extensibility project. The second thing is a more a strategic issue, and that is on the left side, if you have a tightly coupled extension, so it can't be done side by side um, meaningful, then at the moment you have only these low code, no code tools, but you have no development environment available. And not everything, of course, can be done with low, no code tools. And that's exactly uh, the gap which we want to fill now. And that leads me to ERP extensibility tomorrow. The idea is, Okay, on the right side, we have seen we have now an upgrade stable cloud ready custom ABAP development model provided by Steampunk. And we have proven with um, many, many customers and partners that this um, development model works on Steampunk with a lot of code and a lot of solutions. And the idea is now that we reuse this new way to build custom ABAP code in Esfahana public cloud. We share anyhow uh, um, so one development code, code line between Steampunk and Esfahana Public Cloud. And therefore it's easy that we now want to allow you to use the embedded Steampunk development model in Esfahana Cloud. The name is Embedded Steampunk since we really embed the development model which we have on the BTP with Steampunk in Esfahana Public Cloud. So the same technology is used um, the same the restrictions concerning the other language, the same public interface which we provided for the other platform, so public classes for factory calendar number range and so on, all that is reused and that can now be used not side by side, but in S4 HANA public cloud. And therefore the name is, the, the uh, nickname is embedded Steampunk, the official name will be S4 HANA public cloud ABAP environment. If we provide that, then this will not replace any of the existing extensibility options which you have in S4 HANA Public Cloud. All the, uh, we just fill a gap in the portfolio which we had with embedded Steampunk. So we still business users will use low code, no code tools to extend the Puri applications in S4 HANA Cloud. The big partner solutions, the loosely coupled extensions will run on BTP and choose their environment, ABAP, Java, or Node. But if you have a tightly coupled extension, which um, needs an IDE, then you have now embedded Steampunk to do that. If you dig a little bit deeper then and focus into this embedded Steampunk, then it looks like that. So you see here uh, the on-stack extension in blue, a custom code or partner extension. As explained, you can only use um, the public APIs of the basis, so of the other platform. So these are these classes which I explained, number range, or uh, uh, factory calendar or other services, printing and so on. The new stuff is the orange part, the public interface of the S4HANA colleagues. The S4HANA colleagues provided already a lot of remote APIs for BTP. And now they provide local APIs and extension points for embedded steam pumps. So the finance, procure, produce, sales colleague creates uh, or release CDS views so that you can select data from the S4 database tables. They release body extension points so that you can fill in code and manipulate the processes. They release web facades for their create, update, delete um, APIs. Think about create a sales order or something like that, but local APIs. From an ABAP developer perspective, that means um, this embedded Steampunk really feels like developing ABAP in Steampunk. So as explained in the demo by Frank, it really feels totally identical. The big change is that you are now not side by side, but in the S4 HANA cloud system. So you can do select directly on a CDS view. You don't have to do a remote call and you can um, extend um, the process using extension points. So bodies. So the perfect match for a tightly coupled extension, which can't run side by side. Here, um, to make this even more visual, a screenshot showing you how embedded Steampunk will look like. So it's um, you log on with your ABAP development tools to an S4HANA public cloud system. And then you can start coding ABAP as you have seen it in the demo. 
uh, building a class, something like that. You use all the tools which you know. Um, you use the other test cockpit, you use other unit, coverage analyzer, profiler, whatsoever. You use the standard transport mechanism to transport your ABAP stuff through the through system landscape in s public cloud development test and productive system. All that is, as you notice, um, from the on-premise world as well. The big change is if you try now in embedded steampunk to use SAP objects or APIs, which are not part of the public interface, like this classic function pop-up to confirm or a direct select on table Mara instead of using the CDS view, then you see syntax errors. So real syntax errors, you can't activate the code. So already on syntax level, we ensure that you obey to the rule that you must use the released APIs and you're not allowed to use all the other objects. The good thing is, um, if you use the correct objects, like here, the iProduct CDS view, instead of selecting directly from Mara, then you really can directly select the data from the database tables, no remote call is necessary here, and fill the entire table as an example. So that's uh, really in the stack. We were really with embedded steampunk in the S4 HANA public cloud stack. The perfect match for tightly coupled extensions. What about modifications? So if in embedded steampunk, you would open the very prominent SD module pool with the user exits. And if you would like to would try to change here the code, then you would get an error message. So that's really forbidden. You can't do that. The IDE ensures that you can't do that. If you want to extend, um, the solution, then you have to find the corresponding enhancement spot and implement the corresponding um, body with the, with the ABAP class, and then you can do that. But modifications can't be done. So to summarize embedded steampunk, embedded steampunk um, reuses the cloud ready and upgrade stable ABAP, custom ABAP development model, which we have already for some years in steampunk in PTP. But now it allows you to run embedded in the S4 HANA public cloud stack. So that means you are part of the stack. So you use um, the public interfaces of the other platform, so the technical classes and so on, plus the public interface of the S4 HANA colleagues for the finance for pure produce, CDS views, web facades, and so on, and the extension points. You use other development tools for Eclipse to develop the stuff or the Fury tools for the UI. And that um, allows you then to build this custom code directly on S4 on a public cloud. Good. Um, now, a little bit more a visionary part. Um, we have, I think we have seen that Embedded Steampunk nicely extends the scope and options which we currently have in S4 on a public cloud. So a gap is closed concerning the extensibility options with Embedded Steampunk. But um, of course, if you think about S4 HANA private cloud or S4 HANA on premise, here customers would like to see smoother upgrades and the possibility to build future proof and cloud ready extensions as well. And that's uh, why we intend to provide this embedded steampunk model for all the different S4 HANA editions. So for the S4 HANA private cloud and premise as well. The focus is clearly on the cloud. So that means we build the APIs, for example, in S4 HANA um, for the S4 HANA public cloud scope for sales order, for purchase order, and so on. Um, we build that for that scope the APIs, the public APIs, and the extension points. They are provided there quarterly via the updates of S4 HANA public cloud. And then with the yearly releases, those APIs, the suitable ones, which, are, which map to the business scope in S4 HANA on premise or in the S4 HANA private cloud and then made available in the other S4 HANA editions as well. Of course, in um, the private cloud and then S4 HANA premise, the embedded steampunk model is only an option. You can go on with your classic custom code, but perhaps in a new project, if you start a new project, then you um, define, okay, in that project, we want to follow the embedded, embedded steampunk model. You can switch on on ABAP development object level, if you want to follow the strict cloud checks, or if you want to use the standard ABAP checks, and then you can go on um, in a, in a one of your new projects, if the first APIs are available to use the more strict custom ABAP development model of embedded steampunk, for example, in the private cloud to get more and more um, to an upgrade, sta upgrade stable and cloud-ready extensibility model.
Um, so the vision here is that step by step, of course, that will be a longer journey, especially in the fiber cloud and premise. Um, we more and more build extensions which are upgrade stable and cloud ready and future proof. And the three pillars which we add to that are user extensibility with low no code tools, so which help you to easily extend SAP applications. We have embedded Steampunk if you have a tightly coupled extensions and really need an IDE, a development project, and BTP with all the environments to build uh, loosely coupled extensions, bigger partner solutions, and so on. And on premise and in the private cloud, it's absolutely clear we have the classic custom upper coach um, as well. Um, and we will have a mixture um, of the classic custom code and all these new capabilities in parallel. So this will be a journey to get more and more to that point. Good. If you want to have further information, especially about Steampunk and embedded Steampunk, I think there's a nice blog available, which I can recommend, um, written by Harald Cook, head of our platform, which um, illustrates nicely um, and motivates embedded Steampunk and provides the uh, latest news about Steampunk. And with that final slide, hopefully um, we could convince you that um, the, the impact of the ABA platform is really massive. So it really runs the world's business with all the applications running on top. Um, it's the foundation of the new SAP products like SAP S4 HANA. Um, now we transform the ABA platform to a cloud ready environment ready to host GS4 and all the extensions. But I think what, uh, what the main takeaway for you is, it's really time to learn. So there's a big transformation happening. So going from SEAT go to ADT, going from Dune Post to this web based programming model, learning how to extend cloud applications. And seeing all that, I think it's fair to say our has a bright a past and has a brilliant future. And with that, thank you very much. <laughs>